Okay, so let's go ahead and take a look at section 29b, which is called discrete probability distributions. So we've already described what a random variable will do, and for now we're going to focus strictly on the, on the discrete random variables and how the discrete random variable can then go ahead and describe the way that the probabilities are distributed for the event. Okay, so let's kind of review what we had from before. Remember that we said that we were going to toss two coins. Let H be equal to the number of heads. And so we said that being that this is countable, H is going to be equal to either zero head, one head, or two head. And this is going to be our discrete random variable and the values that it can take for this particular event. So we said that this coin was not a fair coin. We said that if you were to look at the probability of getting a head, then the probability is just going to be one-third, tails two-thirds, and it's going to be the same for the second coin as well. So remember what we said then is that if we go ahead and take a look at the probability of having zero heads, that was four-ninths. And we said that if you take a look at the probability of having just one head, that was also four-ninths. And if we went ahead and determined the probability of getting two heads, that would have a probability of just one ninth. Now, being that we are able now to look at, the, at all the different probabilities associated with this random discrete variable, we can now go ahead and talk about ways to represent that, in re represent the probability distribution. So the first way that we know is a graphical form, and we did this yesterday, and we showed you what the spike graph will look like for this particular random discrete probability distribution. Another form that is going to be very helpful for us is also the tabular form, or the table form. And notice that what we have is we have the values of little h, which is going to be 0, 1, or 2, and we're going to associate with that in, in the table the probability of actually having the head be equal to 0, 1, or 2. And so notice I just took those values here and wrote it there. So we can also go ahead and take a look at it at, in a functional form. And sometimes that's not always going to be possible. In this case, it's not possible at all for us. So these two, though, are going to be the primary means by which we actually go ahead and take a look at the discrete probability distribution and how we represent that probability distribution. So, let's go ahead and take a look at some important things that you should take notice with regards to the probability distribution. Is that every single probability that you have is always going to be between 0 and 1. Now, that's nothing different from what we did before with simple probability because we know that if a probability is zero, then it's never going to happen. And if it's equal to one, then it's always going to happen. And the only possibility for the probability is to be between those two or equal to those two values. Now, the other thing as well that is going to be very important for us to recognize is that if we take a look at the probability distribution, if we add all of the distributions up, add all the probabilities up, we come up with 4 ninths plus 4 ninths plus 1 ninth, and sure enough that's equal to 1. So notice that what we have here is that we can write this as saying the summation from h little h equaling 0 to 2 because little h is going to be equal to 0, 1, or 2, that the summation of the probabilities of the random variable associated with 0, 1, and 2, if we go ahead and add all of those values up, sure enough, we come up with 1. So that's going to be two very, piece, two very important pieces of information to keep in mind when, taking, when using the random discrete variable to show the probability distribution that you have for the particular event.